Let it be said by our children's children that when we were tested, we refused to let this journey end, that we did not turn back nor did we falter. And with eyes fixed on the horizon and God's grace upon us, we carried forth that great gift of freedom and delivered it safely to future generations. Back uh, our final segment talking about what is uh, the future for this president. We keep hearing daunting tasks, daunting tasks, Michelle. We keep hearing about the economy, the war, uh, all of what may or may not occur with the big three and the recovery of the banks. Um, this gives him an opportunity to be one of the greatest presidents ever. It also gives him the opportunity, quite frankly, to be a miserable failure in that first term. Absolutely. What does he have to be most careful of? He... He has to be most careful of managing the expectations of the people that voted him in to office. He has to be very careful of governing too far to the right or too far to the left. He's got to govern from the center. He has to take the economy very, very seriously, and he has to continue to beat that drumbeat that we, we, we've heard him say. A few weeks ago, you kept hearing him say, inherit, inherit, inherit. What did he inherit from the Bush administration? What did he inherit from the Clinton administration? And let us know that it is going to, this, this recovery will not take place overnight. It could be many, many years. And uh, let me add quickly that, and for everyone to understand this, this is a global recession. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is not just what he does domestically, which is extremely important, but he's not only the leader of the United States, he also is the leader of the free world. And this global recession could have tremendous impact on anything he does or say. Clarence, let me ask you this. You have known him. You mentioned being from Chicago. I've had an opportunity to know him since he entered the Senate. I'm assuming you may have even known him prior to that. He's a very, state when yeah, <laughs> very pragmatic man. Uh, yes. To some degree, you can sometimes in daunting tasks be too pragmatic. Any concern there? Uh, no, uh, not really, because uh, what's remarkable, you know, Colin Powell hit the nail on the head when, when he talked about, about Barack Obama's steadiness. You know, mm -hmm. while, while John McCain was all over the place and, and, and too reactive, Barack is just the opposite. People complain that, that he reacts too slowly, like the recent Gaza crisis. Mm -hmm. said, why don't you say something? Why don't you say something? said, one president at a time. And what happens? Israel is kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say they settled it, but they certainly arranged for their pullout uh, to, to come right before Barack Obama gets inaugurated. Uh, you know, this happened throughout the campaign. Every criticism I would have of him, I'd prove to be wrong, right. he proved to be right, you know. Uh, so I think the thing he's got to watch out for uh, is just uh, not appearing to be uh, engaged. Uh, and Franklin Roosevelt, you're absolutely right, when he came into office, he had a whole different agenda. He mm -hmm. got a much later start than Barack Obama, who, who just, just, just broke records as far as his transition goes. Uh, but by the end of Franklin Roosevelt's first term, even with the New Deal uh, in place, the economy didn't improve That's that right. much. But his popularity went up. Because people say, hey, he's doing something. Mm -hmm. He's engaged. So it's important for Barack Obama to at least show he's doing something, even if the economy does not completely recover in All four right. years. Well, Joe, Michelle, Clarence, thank you very much. We'll see. Uh, day uh, three, four, five and counting. Uh, so we'll go. <laughs> yeah, and as you say, days hey, yeah. and as you say, that's and, and we should note that that is an artificial uh, yeah. ruler that, that does not uh, <laughs> apply. Changes rules all the time. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back.